Hello everyone, this is the seventh lecture in real analysis and we are going to discuss the principle of mathematical induction. So the plan is to discuss the well-ordering principle, we are going to prove the principle of mathematical induction and we are going to show a few examples of how to apply the principle of mathematical index induction to prove some interesting statements. So before we state the well-ordering principle, let us recall the following theorem. If we have a set that is a subset of int the integer numbers, and if that subset has a supremum, then the supremum is an element of E. So in other words, if we have a set E that is a set of integer numbers, and if, we, if it has a supremum, then the supremum is an element of E. So we proved this theorem in one of the previous lectures, and uh, I'm going to link that lecture in the description to this video so that you can watch it. And actually the well-ordering principle sounds similar to this statement. And the well-ordering principle sounds as follows. So if we have a set E that is a subset of natural numbers, and if that set is non-empty, then E has the least element, okay? So um, we have a set E that is a subset of natural numbers, so, and it's not empty, so then it has the least element N that belongs to the set E. So that is, there exists a number n in E such that for every x in E, x is greater than or equal to n. So n is the smallest element in E and it belongs to E. So the proof of the well-ordering principle is very similar to the proof of this theorem right here. So we are not going to discuss it, uh, and I'm going to refer you to this theorem to look at the proof, and you may even want to uh, do a, uh, an exercise and prove the well-ordering principle. So let us formulate the principle of mathematical induction. So for every natural number n, let a of n be a statement, and of course every statement can be either true or false. And suppose that a of 1 is the statement that is true, and that for every n natural number, if a of n is true, then a of n plus 1 is true. Then a of n is true for, f, for all natural numbers. So basically we have this situation. So a of 1 is true. And then if a of n is true, then it implies that a of n plus 1 is true. So that means that from a of 1 we can move to a of 2. From a of 2 we can make move to a of 3. And so it kind of makes sense to say that uh, all of a of n's are going to be true for every n natural number. So let us prove this theorem. So suppose that statements a of n, where n is a natural number, satisfies the, satisfy the conditions i and ii, so these two conditions of the theorem. We want to show that a of n is true for every natural number n. We are going to do this by contradiction. So suppose that there exists a number k such that a of k is false. Then the set E, which consists of all natural numbers such that a of n is, is false, is not empty, right? Because k belongs to the set E. So let us note 
that the number one does not belong to E. And this is because the statement A of one is true. Right? E consists of all natural numbers n such that A of n is false, but A of 1 is true, so 1 does not belong to E. So for every n in E, n is larger than or equal to 2 because 1 does not belong to E. Uh, so <clears throat> E is a sub subset of natural numbers, so by the well-ordering principle, by the well ordering principle there exists an s that is the infimum of e and that infimum belongs to the set e so we have this situation here the set e consists of some natural numbers and uh, it has an infimum S, and the infimum S is an element of the set E. So since S is in E, A of S is not true. So A of S is not true. So uh, an S is greater than or equal to 2, and this is because every element of E is greater than or equal to 2. So then, because S is greater than or equal to 2, S minus 1 is greater than or equal to 1. So we can talk about A of S minus 1. S minus 1 does not belong to the set E. So A of S minus 1 is true. So A of S minus 1 is true. But, but then by the statement II, if A of S minus 1 is true, then A of S is true. So but then by II, A of S is true. So we have that a of s is not true and a of s is true so this is a contradiction and this finishes the proof of the principle of mathematical induction so qed so let us consider an example let us prove bernoulli's inequality uh, so we want to show that for every n natural number for every real number x, such as x is larger than minus 1, 1 plus x to the power n is greater than or equal to 1 plus nx. So we're going to prove this using mathematical induction. So let us fix x real number such that x is larger than minus 1. We want to show that for every natural number n, 1 plus x to the power n is greater than or equal to 1 plus nx. Uh, so we are going to use the principle of mathematical induction to uh, prove this statement here. So let a of n be the logical statement 1 plus x to the power n greater than or equal to 1 plus nx. So it can be true or false, okay? So um, in order to prove that A of N is true for all natural numbers N, we have to sh check two conditions. So we want to check one that A of one is true and two A of N is true implies a of n plus 1 is true for every n natural number. So step 1, we want to check that a of 1 is true. So a of 1 is going to be, we are going to plug in n equals to 1 
in this statement. So it's going to be 1 plus x to the power 1 is greater than or equal to 1 plus x. Now, is this true? Of course, 1 plus x is greater than or equal to 1 plus x. So this is true. So the first condition holds. So step two is uh, the following. We suppose that a of n is true for some natural number n, and we want to show that a of n plus 1 is true. So a of n is true for some natural number n. It means that, so we have 1 plus x to the power n is greater than or equal to 1 plus nx. Now, we do not have quotes around this statement because it is true. So we have that this, is, this inequality is true. So we want to show that a of n plus 1 is true. That is... 1 plus x to the power n plus 1. We have n plus 1 instead of n in, in our statement. We want to show that this is greater than or equal to 1 plus n plus 1 times x. Okay, so let us look at 1 plus x to the power n plus 1. So 1 plus x to the power n plus 1, it's really 1 plus x times 1 plus x to the power n. Now, because x is greater than minus 1, remember, x is greater than minus 1, x plus 1 is positive. x plus 1 is positive, and 1 plus x to the power n is greater than or equal to 1 plus nx. So, the, this product is greater than or equal to 1 plus x times 1 plus nx. So we can FOIL this product here, and we're going to get 1 plus nx plus x plus nx squared. And so if we simplify this, we are going to get 1 plus n plus 1 times x plus nx squared. However, nx squared is greater than or equal to 0, so the whole expression here is greater than or equal to 1 plus n plus 1 times x. And remember, this is exactly what we wanted to show. We wanted to show that 1 plus x to the power n plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 plus n plus 1 times x, and this is exactly what we have shown here. So then by the principle of mathematical induction, a of n is true for every n natural number. And that finishes the proof of Bernoulli inequality, so QED. So our next example is the following identity. Uh, the sum from j equals to 1 to n of j squared is equal to n, n plus 1, to n plus 1 over 6. And this is true for every n natural number. So we, want, we are going to prove this statement using mathematical induction. So we are going to simplify the process a little bit. So step 1. We are going to check that the statement is true for n equals 1. So if n equals to 1, we have the statement is sum j from 1 to 1, j squared is equal to 1 times 2 times 2 times 1 plus 1 over 6. So let's see if this is true. So this is equivalent to... So this sum right here is just 1, and the right-hand side is equal to 2 times 3, which is 6 over 6, and this is, so this is true. So uh, for n equals to 1, the statement is true. 
So step two, assume that the statement is true for some natural number n. So that let us assume that sum j from 1 to n j squared is equal to n n plus 1 2 n plus 1 over 6 for some n natural number. We want to show that the statement is true when n is replaced by n plus 1. So we want to show that the sum j from 1 to n plus 1 j squared is equal to n plus 1 n plus 1 plus 1, which is n plus 2, uh, 2 n plus 1 plus 1 over 6. So by the way, this state, this uh, right hand side is equal to n plus 1, n plus 2, 2 n plus 3 over 6. So the right hand side should look like this. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and look at the sum j from 1 to n plus 1 j squared. So somehow we want to reduce this to the left-hand side of the statement that we know is true. So we want to have the sum j from 1 to n. So uh, this, is, this sum is equal to the sum j from 1 to n j squared plus the summand when j is equal to n plus 1, so plus n plus 1 squared. So this sum right here, we know that it is equal to n, n plus 1 to n plus 1 over 6. So we have n, n plus 1, 2 n plus 1 over 6. And we want to add n plus 1 squared. So now all we have to do is to find a common denominator here and add these two expressions. And you can uh, verify that if we do that, we are going to have that the right hand side here is equal to n plus 1, n plus 2, 2 n plus 3 over 6, just as we wanted to show. And this finishes the proof, so then we can conclude that by the principle of mathematical induction, the original statement that we wanted to prove is true, so that finishes the proof. And that finishes our video. So thank you for watching this video. Please put a like underneath it. Please subscribe to this channel. And uh, please, in your comments, uh, leave your suggestions about what topics you would like to be covered in this channel. And be good at math.